Hey guys, Tammy here, and today we're going to talk about kids and transition day blues, okay? Now, I know that, you know, we talk about, you know, kids saying, I don't want to go back to the other parents and, and all that, and I think we we hear that sometimes when we're transitioning them and all of that, um, but there's also blowback when we get them back, right, from the other side. And I, I watched my stepsons go through this from the time that they were very little, one and two. Uh, they're now 19 and 20. Obviously, they don't have transition day blues anymore. But I will tell you that even into their teenage years, they did have some decompression time that was needed when they would first come back into our world. As we dive into this topic, let me remind you, as always, if you like the content, don't forget to hit like on this video and subscribe to the channel so that you get notified as new videos are released. If you haven't checked out the podcast, go do that and please share this on social media. When you're dealing with a narcissist specifically or a high conflict parent on the other side, it doesn't necessarily have to be narcissism. There's many, many different um, types of high conflict personalities, everything from borderline to bipolar and all that kind of thing. And, um, you know, and, and there, I always say there's a range, like if you're watching me and you're diagnosed with one of those, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're the high conflict person. The other person could have something more severe. You know, there's a spectrum, right? We are all somewhere on the narcissist spectrum, right? It's just most of us are toward the lower end and then there's the extremes, right? So, but high conflict personalities tend to be at the far extremes of these types of diagnoses. And when you're dealing with someone like that and then the kids come back from there and you're sort of cleaning up the mess, it can feel really, really frustrating. And I think for most of us as parents, it can be real easy to just um, kind of be frustrated with the kids too, right? And maybe, maybe kind of discipline them and, you know, well, they're not behaving well and they're acting out and they need to straighten up and, you know, all those kinds of things. And, and actually that bad behavior is very frequently related to having been in the other per parent's world, particularly when that parent is high conflict. And it's hard because this is one of those things about a breakup or divorce that is really hard for the court to control, right? On a day-to-day -day basis, they can't really control what's going on in someone's household if it's not, you know, unless it's, you know, physical abuse or sexual abuse or something like really, really severe, unfortunately. Kind of the verbal and emotional stuff isn't something the court has as much ability to control, but it does very much impact our children. When the children come back, a lot of times they're not just acting out and all that kind of thing. They can actually be really mean. Sometimes they say really mean or cruel things to us, or if they're teenagers, they come back and they're hateful and they're glaring and you know, half the time teenagers are that way anyway. So you're like, okay, is this just a teenager day? Is this related to the other being in the other parent's house? You know, we're trying to figure out all the dynamics of what's going on. You want to watch for patterns. I mean, obviously, if the child comes back every single time and they're going through this same thing, then that tells you it's not just a teenage day or a hormone day or whatever. It's something that is consistent in the other world. So let's kind of try to put ourselves in their position, okay? I always say, first of all, that you had a relationship with this person, probably. I mean, I know some people are just, you know, made a baby with somebody, but I would say for the vast majority of us, you actually had a relationship with this person um, or you were married to them. And so you know what that's like for you. You know what you experienced you know how much you endured before you hit the breaking point um, to where the relationship ended. And it's not surprising that you now have children who are reacting to suffering through that same type of toxicity, okay? It, it's no less toxic for a child necessarily than it is for 
us as, you know, the partner. I mean, in actuality, it can be a little bit harder for the kids, I think, because they're powerless, right? They have less control. The parent is an authority figure over them, which can make it even worse. And then if that parent is bad mouthing you or saying negative things about you, then the child comes back and they're with you and they're having a negative reaction to you. That really shouldn't be surprising to us at all, right? It should be very normal. But I think what happens is they come back and we tend to think, oh, we missed them. We assume they missed us and we kind of want this warm, fuzzy reunion that is frankly not what it looks like the vast majority of the time. So when the child is in the other parent's world, if you have a parent that is high conflict, that is saying negative things about you, that's talking bad, I mean, that child only has a handful of ways to deal with that, right? And again, a lot of times that type of behavior isn't something that the court can do anything about. I mean, most people have in their orders that you're not to speak negative about the other parent, but let's face it, a narcissist thinks that they can just do whatever they want. They think they're above it, right? And they don't think the rules apply to them. So why would they think that rule applies to them? They don't. So your child goes over there and let's assume the other parent is saying bad or negative things about you. Well, what are the child's options? Okay. Well, depending on the age or whatever, sometimes you're lucky enough that they'll be oblivious. Okay. And Sometimes they're young enough to kind of be oblivious to what it all means, but they still know the other parent is saying not nice things about you, right? They don't really understand the whole dynamic. So they're oblivious enough, but it might still be like that sort of carries over in their brain. Like, oh, you know, parent A said parent B was no good. Now I'm here with parent B. Hmm. Maybe they're no good. You know, that's kind of going through their mind. Or... What happens is they're a little bit older, maybe, and maybe they jump on the parent bashing bandwagon, okay? So if I'm with a parent A and parent A is talking bad about parent B, maybe I join in with parent A just out of sheer survival and say, yeah, yeah, parent B can really be difficult. Parent B can really be bitchy. Parent B can really be a jerk, you know, whatever it is. Um, maybe I jump on that bandwagon because because I don't know how else to survive it, okay? Maybe I try to push back on parent A and say, you know, that's upsetting. I don't like when you speak about the other parent that way. I find sometimes kids will start to do that as they get a little bit older. They'll express that more. But in that range of like 6 to 12 or so, usually you don't see a lot of that because they're just trying to survive and they don't, they haven't really found their voice yet to be able to push back in that way. Then I come back to parent B's home. I'm the child. I either was listening to parent A talk badly about parent B the whole time, or I jumped on that bandwagon, or at the very least, maybe I just sat back and I was neutral, but I'm old enough to feel like I should have said something. I should have stopped it. I should have, you know, told parent A that it bothers me or whatever. And I feel guilty because I didn't, right? So there's a lot of different emotional scenarios that can happen. And, you know, it varies depending on the child's age, you know, the amount of cognition they have around these issues. Um, some children develop emotionally faster than other children. It depends on their personalities, you know, are they a people pleaser? Are they somebody that is going to stand up for other people? You know, all that kind of thing plays into it. So this can look different even for each child that you have at different stages um, and according to their different personalities. But then they come back and they've been through <laughs> all of the negativity in the other household. And now maybe I'm ashamed because I didn't stand up for you. Maybe I feel guilty because I actually jumped on the bandwagon and bashed you too. You know, maybe I'm little and I'm really confused, but the other parent says you're bad and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Okay. So there's all these things going on in your kid's mind. And I say this because I think as a parent, 
most people that I see either one really feel hurt. They have their feelings hurt over how their child reacts. And look, we're human, right? Understandably, we love our children. We want to be loved by our children, I think, for the most part. And so that can be really devastating when you feel like your child doesn't reciprocate that love. And also, you know, sometimes parents react with anger. Sometimes it's like, well, how dare you? I'm the person that does all the things for you. I think that was probably more commonly my reaction in the very beginning was like, really? I'm the one that's doing 99.9% of the load and you're mad at me. You go with him for 12 hours and go shopping and get lunch and he buys you a couple things and you come back and now all of a sudden I'm the bad guy? Like what? But that is how we react a lot of times. I'm hopeful that with this perspective that you can maybe be a little more empathetic towards your kids, have a little more grace towards them and maybe, maybe not have it hit you so hard to where you feel, you know, hurt or upset by it, but you understand that it's just part of your child's processing. They're not trying to hurt you. Um, I think what happens is as they get older, they start to, the pieces start to link together more and they'll start to understand and it will come full circle. Um, And in the meantime, your job is to just take the high road. Your job is to not sink to the other level that the parent the other parent is sinking because eventually this will come back around. And remember, we're always taking a long-term approach on custody, not a short-term. We're not going for short-term wins. We're going for long-term success in your child custody case. If you'd like to learn more about how I can help you achieve that long-term success, you can go to divorceuniversityonline.com forward slash VIP dash coaching. There's a link on that page. You can book a time to speak to a member of my staff, learn more about my services and how I might be able to help you on this journey. See you guys next time.